Hi, and welcome to chapter 10, where we're going to talk about some Excel exercises for bonds. <clears throat> so the first thing you'll notice in chapter 10 is I have the equations right here that we're going to be working with. And the first thing we're going to be working with is the fully taxable equivalent yield. So let me make this bigger so you can see it better. Okay, so this would be on a bond that is federally tax free. So you would only pay uh, state tax on this bond, not federal tax. So in order to calculate the FTEY, which is the fully taxable equivalent yield, we need to follow this formula up here, which is very simple. Now, the fully taxable equivalent yield for corporates is always expressed as a fully taxable yield because there is no uh, tax deduction for corporates. So corporates are always going to be um, the exact same yield as on the bond. So there's no real calculation needed to make to make here. It's always going to be that whatever the corporate bond rate is. So that's the easiest part. Now we calculate the equivalent yield in the muni since it's tax federal tax free. We want to see what this yield really represents if we convert it to a taxable level. So it's comparable to the corporate bond. So again, I'm going to take the yield and I'm just going to divide it by one minus the federal tax rate. Okay. Okay, I just adjusted the formula because I had the wrong cell here. But if I open this up, so in this case, if you're going to invest it, the risks are the same. Invest in the corporate of the muni, the corporate pays more than the muni when the muni is elevated to its, its a fully taxable equivalent yield. Let's look at example two down here. So this muni is paying going to pay 6.25% yield with a corporate tax um, equi uh, equivalent of 10% here. So we're going to see... What is the taxable yield? Is this really a better or worse to invest in a muni? So again, I take the muni and I'm going to divide by one minus the tax rate. And I get 10 if I open this up. So in this case, the muni, the equivalent yield is higher than the corporate. So you, you would want to you, uh, buy the muni here. So for these two, in this case, you would want to invest in the muni, and in this case, you would want to invest in the corporate. Because the tax rate is so low, even though the bond yield is higher here than here, the tax rate is much lower, so it makes more sense just to invest in the corporate bond. Okay, so let's look at a bond that would be federal and state tax-free. So this would be a little bit more complex of a calculation, but this what this is really saying is, this bond is a municipal that you're not going to pay any federal or state tax on. So right away, again, for the corporate, it's already expressed as a fully taxable equivalent yield. So there's really nothing to calculate here. We're just going to bring the 10% down. That's the yield on it. So the tax rates don't really matter on the corporate side because it's already fully taxable yield. So, but we want to convert the muni into a fully taxable yield. So Okay, so when we do this formula, Here's the formula up here, and you can see it's from this formula here. So let's go back. Now the one thing about this formula is you do, I'm just gonna, you do need, if you're gonna put this in, a multiplication sign here in Excel. Let's put that there. Okay, so let me start the formula, and I'm going to start with an equals, let the Excel know it's a formula, bond rate, divided by, and I'm going to start with parentheses, one minus parentheses, federal plus state, times one minus the federal tax rate. And I have one, two, th I have um, one, two, three parentheses here. So I have three on the right side. And that gets to 11. 
91. So I'm just going to copy this formula over. So in this case, it would make sense to get the muni because the taxable equivalent is higher than the corporate. Here, the taxable equivalent is lower than the corporate, so it would be better off with the corporate bonds. And again, this is assuming that these bonds um, all have a similar risk. Okay, so this would be a no and then a yes here. That's the point of doing this is to really see which is I'm better off getting. Here, you're better off getting the corporate bond and paying the taxes um, than getting the muni because equivalently the equivalent is less than the muni. Now, the less would be if it was just a state tax-free bond. So you would pay federal tax, but no state tax. And again, we use that same formula, take the bond yield, and we're gonna divide by one minus the state rate. And then we get the this right here, and this is gonna be equal to 10%. There's no formula needed. And I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this once this is the beauty of Excel, once you make the formula. But one thing here is that you may want to open this up to be two percentage points. Okay, so that's the first part of this chapter. Let's move over to conversion. Okay, so on the conversion, we're going to look at the uh, calculating return for U.S. bonds denominated in dollars when you have a foreign exchange rate difference. So this would be converting your money uh, if you had a foreign exchange, meaning you're taking your money from a foreign currency to put it into the into the bond. And then you have to take the money when you get the uh, money out, you have to convert it back to the currency to get to your currency. So this is quite common that if you are investing in a foreign currency. So maybe here we're investing um, Maybe we have our currency is different than the dollar, and so that could that could happen where you need to take a currency, convert it to whatever currency the bond's trading in, and then when you cash the bond out, you have to convert back to your home currency to spend it. Okay, so the formula. I'm going to start out with an equal sign. Let know it's a formula, and then I'm going to include two parentheses to start out with. I'm going to take the beginning value of the bond plus sorry the ending value of the bond plus the interest received. And I'm going to close that parentheses, and then we're going to divide by the ending, the beginning value of the bond. Okay, and then I'm going to multiply that by open parentheses the ending, the FX rate at the end of the holding period, divided by the FX rate at the beginning of the holding period. And I'm going to close that up, and then everything gets minus by one. And we get a, we could convert this to a percent. So this would be a 36% return. And we'll just copy this down. So you see that if this was 0.5, it would be a 50% return. But because the currency uh, exchange rate went up, the value went lower. And you see here, um, well, these are different numbers, but I just copied the formula down for all four cells. So that would be how you would calculate the return of the bond using if it foreign currency was involved. Okay, let's look at the conversion, the conversion value. So here the conversion value is pretty simple. I'm going to take the conversion ratio and I'm going to multiply it by the stock price. And this is the conversion value, and that's actually in currency. So put that in currency and pull that down. Oops, just a little too far. Okay, so that would be the conversion value. Of course, the formula is I'm getting it from the equation sheet here. And to understand what the conversion value means, you really have to watch my lecture on chapter 10 or read the textbook on chapter 10. Now let's look at the conversion equivalent to calculate that. I would take the current price of the bond and divide it by the conversion ratio. So this would be the conversion equivalent. And let me just pull that down. Now the conversion premium in dollars, we're going to look at the premium listed in dollars. I'm going to simply take the current market price of the convertible bond and minus the conversion value.
we get 200 is the conversion premium. Okay, so the conversion premium percentage, you see that uh, these numbers here are conveniently listed down here. So if we want to see the actual pre pre premium based on the conversion value, we are just going to take B36 and we're going to divide that by C36. And we get the conversion premium. Okay, so and again, the formulas are here in the equational. If you're wondering what formulas I'm using, but I'm just showing you how you can calculate these easily into Excel. All right. Thank you for your time. And I hope you found this video uh, instructional and in explaining the quantitative aspects of Chapter 10 for investments. Take care.